The relief of Padi Horesnet, the tomb owner of the burial ground. His occupation was as chief trustee to the pharaoh's wife. The owner of the tomb stands at the entrance to the open air court. The court is a monumental sacrificial room. These false doors seen here on the left and right are where the priests perform sacrifices, whether real or merely symbolic, as summoned by the scriptures. Then you have to imagine, over there stood these sacrificial altars, and at the very minimum, water was poured over them. We also have one sacrificial altar where one could make burnt offerings. Da könnte man Brandopfer äh, angerichtet haben, also Brandopfer verbrannt haben. The owner of this tomb is satisfied. His sacrificial altar is richly laid with fish, poultry, bread, fruits and vegetables. A living trace from ancient times is the Egyptian market. Here the women are in charge. Over 3,000 years ago, women bartered and exchanged the goods they produced at home, like fruit, vegetables, and textiles. Over thousands of years, and despite other religions, the market has still remained their public meeting place. a procession in the open court. We go further inside the tomb. In this alcove once stood the statue of the god Osiris. He rules over the west, where the sun sets, and receives the dead on their arrival in the hereafter. Today the statue stands in the Cairo Museum. Over 30 years ago, Professor Grefer crawled through this hole in the wall which is now sealed into this burial chamber. Those days, the site was completely filled with rubble. Paddy Horesnet, the tomb owner, had his responsibilities written on the walls for posterity. His southerly border went as far as Elephantine, his northerly border to Tinis. That is, and now converted into Egyptian measurements, about 320 kilometers, meaning kilometers along the Nile and then the chief trustee of the pharaoh god's wife, then the name Padiha Resnet, blessed and deceased, son of the chief of the chamber master to the pharaoh god's wife, Akati Menru. That's the name of his father, and may he be provided for with all his sacrificial offerings on his altar. May he have enough to drink. And something is destroyed, the remainder is very indistinct. Then it continues on. The provisions for the deceased in the next world have all been accounted for. Newly found fragments. Professor Grefer tries to reconstruct something whole out of all the pieces. In the Moktav, a basket made of rubber tires, the workers carry away the rubble. Ali Farouk is the supervisor and foreman. If the workers are going too slow, he grumbles and forces them to move quicker with his stick. Finding the woman's coffin with the mummy last year remains quite unforgettable for Ali. We found the coffin here and are very proud and very honored because it is such a rare occasion to make a discovery like this. This is how the tomb once stood in the valley. Our 3D reconstruction demonstrates its overwhelming dimensions. The side walls measured six meters high. The pylon at the entrance towered 10 meters high. 
Above ground, the tomb was larger than a tennis court is today. The subterranean open court was cut 11 meters deep into the desert rock. The tomb chambers nested below. The deepest chamber lay a further 18 meters underground, where most probably the tomb owner Padihoresnet was buried. The eternal rest of the dead is strictly guarded. Inspectors from the Egyptian Council of Antiquities now guard the coffin with the mummy. Professor Grefe is returning from the council to his office. He has received permission to examine the mummy. Every step of his scientific excavation, however, requires permission and concessions. A mere stamp on a piece of paper is not enough. Even in modern Egypt, some ancient customs have been kept. Of course, life has changed here tremendously. Firstly, it has become increasingly westernized. And since the days of antiquity, it has been radically changed through Christianity and Islam. But nevertheless, most of the underlying behavior still remains the same. Therefore, it could be that a functionary or government official theoretically has an esteemed position, but is completely powerless in the village because other influential groups in the community are more efficient. When so much rubble has to be removed, Professor Grefe needs 40 men and has to calculate about 500 marks per day. On the 10th is payday. Professor Grefe pays and Ali writes down the amount. 20 Egyptian pounds per day.